not have something new if you continue to think the old way. I'm speaking to you this morning on steps into your new season. Steps into your new season. And very quickly, there are three things I thought I would mention. Very quickly, there are three things that I want to mention to you. Amen. Number one is your expectation. Number two is your declaration. And number three is your action. Number one is your expectation. Number two is your declaration. And number three is your action. One of the first things God does before he does a new thing in your life is to awaken your consciousness to that reality. If you are not expecting something new, you may see it and not recognize it. If you are not expecting something new, you will not be very sensitive to welcome its arrival. So God begins to prepare your mind. He begins to give you promises. I mentioned some of these things a few weeks ago, but... It just came that I, I need to talk about this again. Your expectation, it's very important. You cannot have something new if you continue to think the old way. Your past is not necessarily a true reflection of your future. There are some people here this morning, you say, Pastor, things don't work for me. If you continue to think like that, things will still not work for you. So you need to modify your expectation. You need to adjust your expectation. Now, sometimes we are confused about our, between the difference between our status and our situation. Your status is who you are. It's your identity. Your situation is what you are passing through. It will soon pass away. When you understand your status, your situation will not worry you so much. It's like a prince. A prince is not disturbed if he doesn't have money at the moment. He knows royalty lives inside him. You know, in fact, a thought came to my mind as I was preparing this message. And I was like, who is a prince? Actually, the question came, who is a prince? And look at the answer that came to my mind. That a prince is a king who is not yet crowned. No, you didn't get that. The kingship, the royalty is already inside him. While it is true, not all princes in their lifetime will become kings. But they have the element of kingship inside them. And when they are looking for someone to be crowned, you can trust me, they are looking for a prince. See, Pastor, if you know where I am coming from, I don't need to know where you are coming from. It is not very important. What is important to me at this stage of your life is where you are going to. If you keep dwelling in where you are coming from, you will not be able to get into where you are going to. When God began to tell the Israelites about Canaan, he kept on telling them the land that is flowing with milk and honey, the land that is good, I'm going to give you, I've promised it to your fathers. He didn't tell them about the sufferings of Egypt. And they left Egypt with that expectation that they would get into Canaan, the land flowing with milk and honey. And they were excited, they were happy. They followed Moses out of Egypt. But one day, while Moses was away, Moses the visionary leader, Moses the man of God, their prophet, who was always telling them about Canaan, one day when Moses was away, Aaron took over the leadership. And guess what the message was in the camp? It was about the onions and cucumbers of Egypt. And they so talked about the onions that the Israelites began to desire to go back. They so talked about the onions and the cucumbers that the Israelites forgot the sufferings associated with their servitude. I know sometimes when I read that scripture, I'm like, sorry, oh, is it a different type of onion? 
<laughs> cucumber or the same one that we know. Moses, the prophet leader, built their expectation. The future. Aaron took over. Who could speak more eloquently? But he dragged their expectation to where they were coming from until they began to question the authority of Moses. Until they so limited the power of God and God decided that for this thing you have done, none of you will get into Canaan. When our expectations are bad, it limits our possibilities. So if you get into the next season, the new season, the first thing God wants you to work on is your expectation. I said sometimes ago, your mind could be your prison, but it could also be your platform. It depends on how you use it. I have a friend. My friend is in the U.S. now. We were in the university together. Daddy knows him. Right from the time we were on campus, this, my friend, is from Isheim. No? Some of you have not even heard of the place before. But right from the time we were on campus, he's been talking about the fact that he will not live in Nigeria. Everything around him was looking at Nigeria. But he said his desire was not to live in Nigeria. And uh, now that time, sincerely speaking, I didn't have a problem living in Nigeria. I still I don't have that problem. So for ev everybody with their own differences, okay? There's nothing wrong about it. But he kept on saying it. And everyone that knew him knew that he wanted to travel. Then we finished school and we wanted to serve. And I was posted to Delta State, an oil-rich state. And he was posted to Osho State. He left Ife for a day or where was that that he served again. But he kept on having that expectation. I'm going to travel. I'm going to travel. <laughs> I'm wondering, Brian, you will travel home. But, and guess what? One day, he traveled. <laughs> One day, he traveled. God did it. God honored him. Have you read before that the expectation of the righteous shall not be cut off? Many of us are where we are not because the situation is so strong. It is because our expectations are so low. You're not thinking great. You are not expecting big things. I just want it small. If you, if you play it small, you are reducing the abilities of God. If all you're expecting in life are the things your parents can offer, where will be the role of God in the story of your life? Lord, I don't know how this will work, but I've seen it and I'm expecting it. Come and say I hear. Expectation. What do you think the purpose of dream is? How many of you have ever had a dream that felt so good that when you woke up, you wished it continued? Huh? Why do you think God shows you those type of things? To sow a seed in your mind about what possibilities lie ahead of you in case you are interested. But guess what? We take the negative dreams more seriously than the positive ones. If you have a negative dream now and you wake up, you will hear prayer. What's wrong? He just woke up. Yeah, he probably had a bad dream. How many, of, how many times have they seen you pray after you wake up and they say, maybe he had a good dream. If you have a good dream, it will just be quiet. You know, I had a dream yesterday. Huh? Instead of him to say, in the name of Jesus, I receive it. That thing that you showed me, I'm going to leave it out. It is my reality. It is happening in my lifetime. No, we don't do that. We just smile. But if it's a bad dream, 
you begin to pray. I'm asking you this morning, why don't you take that thing, those things God is showing you as the reality, as the things that God has said. He says, I'm always thinking about you. He says, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you, see the Lord. Thought of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. Many of us are coming from backgrounds where we are taught that God is just waiting for you to commit sin so that he can deal with you. You make it look like God is a last man officer. That's not God. God is not waiting for you to commit sin so that he can punish you. Actually, God wants to ensure that you take decisions that will not make you commit sin. But he looks at you and says, if only you know the thoughts that I'm thinking towards you. But I've tried to show you glimpses of those thoughts in your dream, but you thought they were dreams. He said, brother, why have you come for deliverance? Pastor, the kind of dreams I've been having these days, they are so terrible. So the terrible ones, you go for deliverance. But you have never gone for affirmation <laughs> for the good ones. What's your problem? If your expectations are so low, your manifestations will be very few. Let's up the game. Up it, up it, up it, up it. I'd like you to stand up from after this service and say, God, I receive all the things you have been showing me. God, I accept who you have said I am. People look at you and call you good names. You fight back. No, don't call me like that. Is there anything wrong with saying I receive it? You'll be playing humility with God. When actually, let me tell you, when God says you are the one, you say, no God, I am not the one. That is no longer humility, it's actually pride. That it looks like humility does not make it humility. One of the reasons God was angry with some people was that he said they limited the only one of Israel. Why? What does it mean? Because what he said he could do, they said he couldn't do. Can we begin to work on our expectations?